Are you feeling ashamed for falling for a toxic person? Maybe you're hiding details of what's happening to you because of what you think your friends might think. Do you ever wonder if there's something wrong with you because you've gotten into this relationship? Maybe you've heard it takes two to tango, so it apparently must be your fault that all of this has been happening with your partner. Hi, I'm Dr. Carrie Kerr McAvoy, a mental health specialist with over 20 years of counseling experience and I'm also a narcissistic abuse survivor. Here, we're gonna talk about all things related to narcissism, personality disorders, and healthy relationships. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do it now so that you don't miss my upcoming videos on how to learn to recognize toxic relationships and how to protect yourself better from narcissistic abuse. What is actually the truth about victims? Are we weak-willed people who are people pleasers? Are we codependent maybe? If your experience has been like mine, then you've heard there's something wrong with you for getting into a toxic relationship. Maybe you've been asking what red flags you've missed or maybe somebody has accused you of ignoring signs that you shouldn't have. Maybe you've been told that you've suffered from some trauma or that you've come from a, some troubled home. It's assumed that people get into bad relationships on purpose because we're defective individuals who seek out wounded people or that we're so needy, we can't say no. Five years ago, I met someone on a dating app. I thought I'd met the perfect person and I fell quickly in love. It wasn't until two months after the wedding I discovered I'd married a stranger. The abuse that I suffered started at first very slowly. He'd offer here and there helpful criticisms, so to speak, so that I could be a better person, more efficient, more logical. I had no idea that I was being lied to or that he was cheating. Here's what most people don't understand. Toxic people don't appear toxic when we meet them. They hide their antagonistic nature behind a mask of civility. We think we've met a good guy or a wonderful woman, not a monster. And it isn't until the relationship enters into the next phase that we've discovered the lie. So is it our fault when we get into a bad relationship? And if dangerous people are that good at deception, how can we protect ourselves better? And are some of us at more risk of being targeted than others? These are pivotal questions because we all wanna feel safer. So we ask these things and ask those who've been in these relationships in order to discover some mysterious reasons for why things like this happen. So let's first start by addressing the personality of the victim. Does it mean that you're codependent or a people pleaser because you got into a relationship with a dangerous person? That's the question that Sandra L. Brown, social worker and researcher, wanted to know when she looked at 600 pathological love relationships. This was a large study done in Purdue University in 2014. For years up to then, it had been assumed only codependent people who are, have traumatic backgrounds or bad homes had gotten into these kinds of relationships. That these were individuals who were poor at setting boundaries. Now, that was actually the the kind of the typical client that most domestic violence shelters saw. So they took that population and made it as a descriptor for the rest of everybody else who got into an abusive relationship. But Sandra Brown decided to challenge this assumption and did a large study. She saw 600 couples and gave them personality tests. She took detailed family histories and she assessed the level of trauma that they've had in their life. And her findings was astounding. What had been assumed to be true about narcissistic abuse victims was discovered to be wrong. In fact, 63% of the women studied had not come from bad homes and did not have significant history of trauma. In other words, they weren't codependent and they couldn't be described as people pleasing. In fact, most of these women were high achieving professionals who had done well into their life until they met their partner. So, how did they find themselves in this toxic relationship? The answer had to do with their personality. 
they shared two things in common. They were agreeable and conscientious. And in fact, these qualities aren't weaknesses, they're strengths. These are the things that make you and I do well in life. It's what makes us determined, loyal, persistent, we're goal setters, we're hardworking, we work well on teams with other people. In fact, these are the individuals you'd wanna hire if you were looking for a job candidate. They fulfill their commitments and they keep to their word. They're trusting and believe in the goodness of others. They act out of a high level of moral compass and have a, a large degree of integrity. It was these strengths that predatory people were using against them. They were using the, the natural blinded trust of these women against them in order to manipulate and exploit them. Because people who are naturally like this assume that others are like this, that most people are well-intended. And it was that fact, their blindedness, that was being exploited. It wasn't that there was something wrong with them, it's actually that something was right. In fact, Sandra Brown coined this characteristics of these individuals as super traits. These are the traits that help these people be successful, but now was ending up to be a downfall. It's the same personality traits that in fact then made, once they were in the relationship, leaving it so difficult. Their steadfastness increased their persistence in trying to find a way to improve their relationship and their belief that people are basically good blinded them to the possibility that some personality types don't change and it was their high moral integrity about not wanting to leave the relationship because it felt like a moral failure that locked them in. This is what happened to me. I had earned a PhD in psychology, had grown a successful counseling business and in fact raised three children and had had a good marriage. I found myself widowed and single and at the time I had no idea there was dangerous people on dating apps that to me, bad people existed in some nebulous area out there. There was something I saw on television. I never dreamed someone might actually target me because I was a recent widow. In fact, I hadn't even, even heard of the word love bombing or narcissistic abuse, or that people who lived double lives to me were just something of the movies until it happened to me. It is these super traits that are part of our hard wiring, part of our personality, it's who we are, it's not changeable. And unless we learn ways to protect ourselves, these super traits that are so lovely also make us vulnerable to narcissistic or psychopathic people. We need to view people differently in order to be safer. We need to learn to see that our agreeableness and high moral standards, though desirable qualities, may actually be a downfall when applied to everyone. I need to speak smarter about who I extend my trust and respect to. So does that apply to you? Do you have the super traits of agreeableness and conscientiousness? There's an upcoming webinar with Sandra L. Brown called How Could I Have Fallen for a Dangerous Man? In this webinar, she's going to share more about what these super traits are and how for those of us who have them, protect ourselves better from dangerous people. Get your tickets to this through the link in the notes below. I want you to know, though, that there is not something wrong with you for getting into a toxic relationship. Predatory people have learned how to use your best qualities against you. Let's take our power back and learn how to toxic people proof ourselves. So thank you so much for joining me on this today. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more advice like this. And I'll see you the next time.